Traders, what's going on? Jamie Setley here. It is a midweek strategy webinar, August 9th, 2017. And uh, this is, I guess, the super quiet markets on nuclear war threats edition of the midweek strategy webinar. Um, what's going on, everyone? Vladimir, how are you? Talking about uh, gold, uh, cable, net gas, your thing. I'll get to those. I'll do the usual format, going through... Uh, you know, the majors and, and whatnot, uh, and then we'll, you know, get into the commodities and then uh, any questions you guys have. So DXY, all right, so we have bounced off of a really big level. Uh, we've kind of been focusing on it really for like three or so weeks now. We, we actually had a couple, right? We were looking at 930215. That didn't hold the little overshoot, but did end up holding 92.63, of course, which was the um, the high from 2005. Also very close to the low from August 2015. So we're there. Okay, we've bounced. Uh, what now? Well, I think that the next big – first of all, I think that we're – you know, if you go back to Sunday's uh, swing update, uh, we did – I had a, a statistical type of study on euro, right, talking about um, the extreme RSI on the weekly chart, right? It was RSI on the weekly. I think it was above 76 on the weekly. And going out, the bias really over for quite a while, uh, at least I ran the study over 13 weeks, you know, it, it's negative. So this is the first week since that, um, as it is now, you know, here we are, 1740, uh, actually trading right at a level that we ended after after NFP. I'll get to that uh, in the short term. The whole point of, of, of this is to kind of get across that I think you actually have, I think we're going to have some sideways uh, markets for probably the rest of August, at least, right? And fits really well uh, with with the seasonal stuff and the sentiment that we had down here. So, you know, I do think that this low is temporary, but it probably lasts the entire month. OK, um, you know, it's a good sign, too, for, you know, as far as that bias is concerned. That you actually had the low here on August 2nd um, very early in the month. Right. Typically, when you get really early month lows, you, you tend to, you know, it kind of, you'll tend to see late month highs. So this area up here, this confluence is, you know, around 9450 uh, or so, 9455, if you want to get real specific, and it's in the middle of the month. And if we go down to a 60 minute chart, I, the average on here, by the way, is a 20 day. So this is a good place to get some resistance. Uh, you know, short term. But if we look at this is the rally from the low, it actually is a pretty clean five wave rally, right? One, two, three, four, and then probably even this is probably one, two, three, four, five. So you actually have a five wave rally in the dollar index. I guess you could count a five wave decline on a five minute chart. It might be getting a little ridiculous there looking at that short term, but you get the idea. Um, and from here, I kind of be looking at, you know, a dip in the dollar index followed by um, another pop higher. Right. So. That's that's my my thought process, I guess, if you wanted to uh, look for a six one eight drop. From here, if that were to happen, you talk about 93 area as being a level for uh, potential support. Um, but, you know, broadly speaking, bigger picture, um, it, my, my key here or what I'm trying to focus on is where is the bigger resistance in the dollar? And I think the answer to that is probably around the 9450 area. OK, the manner in which it gets there, I guess, is starting to become a bit more clear. Because, uh, as noted, we have the five up off the low 
and 20 day average probably good place for a very for a minor top if you will so pull back again this is august it's really choppy you know you can see just how much the markets uh how dull they are and don't care right if you're in an active market environment you probably see a little more action um you know uh after threats of nuclear war <laughs> i mean basically i don't know if you guys saw you know the what happened yesterday with the tweets and whatnot from Trump and blah, 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 talking about fire and fury and, and all this stuff. But, um, you know, markets are just kind of like, eh, right? I mean, really doesn't matter the market. I mean, gold's up today. Um, that's really about it. I mean, the S&P is down overnight a little bit, but it's down five points now. You know, it's like, who cares? And currencies, for the most part, really are just kind of yawning. At all of this uh, Swiss francs really the only good mover at this point today so yeah that's the thinking and uh, if we you know transition right into euro from here you know it's similar um, as far as the one two three four five is concerned one two three four five so probably looking for a bounce in euro here. Basically back to the month open, 1825 would be 618, right? 1825, 1840. Um, and then that would be, then you'd be looking lower again. So this morning I noted I was looking to buy uh, 1660, 1670. That was actually the 20 day average in euro. Uh, DXY, as we know, already hit its 20-day average. Euro did not, so a little annoying there. And 1665, uh, 1670 also was the, me the the bigger median line, right? This is the one, the longer-term one um, that does cross through the election high. So that was for me this morning, looking for that extra, I guess, you know, 20 pips. We got down to 1688 looking for 20 pips lower to buy it and it turned up uh that happens in these really quiet markets you just don't get to the levels you're looking for i will say i guess you did have a level here you had you know we could i mean we could i guess we could still get it but you did have uh 1694 that's a square root level remember the square root level up here 1898 very close to the high that we had on 82 as well so you know for me patience um you know tough to do i know it's like if i'm like I, I think that we're going up to you know the 1825 1840 region before we head lower it's tempting to just go long here um but you know best to wait for the day see what it looks like and you never know if you get some some sort of quick reaction to the downside just know that 1670 you know, ish, 1660, 1670 is a really big spot, I think, for uh, for support in in euro. Okay, and that's really where I'd be looking for a pretty decent, um, pretty decent support, right? Like 1670, then take it back up, you know, to, to the month open or something. So that's the big thing as far as I'm concerned in in euro. Um, you know, going back, let's let's step back just a bit, and let's look at. You know, I did a lot of updates on the long term chart, the, the long term page this weekend. You don't do a lot of the they're they're long term, right, in nature. So you don't get um, they, they're not done a whole lot. But when they are done, they're done for a reason. So obviously hitting huge huge resistance in euro. Okay doesn't mean we can't eventually break it. It does mean that we're probably due for a period of sideways. And um, the analog here on Euro, interesting, but the one on DXY is the one we've really been focused on. And as you can see, it really does suggest kind of um, sideways for throughout August and then down, right? And then you get a bigger correction. So that would be, you know, kind of mid, late September in the, in the, in the rally. So we'll deal with this as, as we work towards it. But I want you to be aware of it because it's not the analog itself, right? Analog, everything is secondary to price action, 
right? Good traders, good money managers are slaves to price action. And um, this, as well as seasonality for that matter, uh, it, it, it's all secondary. However, when it all comes together, it paints a pretty good, a pretty good picture, right? And so when, it, when it's all coming together and it's all you know, in agreement, if you will, and most importantly is price, which is in agreement because we did bounce from a major level, that 92.55 area, right? It says that August probably going to be, um, you know, have to work off all that sentiment, all those sentiment extremes that we had in the dollar, right? And the dollar was all of a sudden going to hell. Probably have to work that off. Not necessarily with an extreme rally, but rather, you know, a muted rally and in, in, in a period of sideways. Okay, and then uh, dollar Swiss, we will get to that too. It could be a major, major um, turn here in dollar Swiss, a major low that is. Dollar Swiss, where are we? Where's TLT right now? I need to be aware of these things. Twenty-five seventy-five. Yeah, don't forget the level that we're looking for on TLT. Um, all right, dollar Swiss, dollar Swiss, dollar Swiss. Okay, so dollar Swiss, which I'm going to go to actually before we look at pounds. So this was the chart. I believe we published this Monday or Sunday night. Excuse me. You have a real clean five up. In dollar Swiss, I mean, look at this: one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, five. Real clean, okay. And on that longer term chart, maybe have uh, one hell of a uh, of, of of a of a low in. So you probably are in corrective mode now. A looking for B, little drop C. Remember, the focus on this was on the blue parallel, and I think at this point, it might actually be close to the 618 at some point. Lo and behold, it probably is. You're talking about 95.66 is the 618. Uh, so I'm looking for corrective action in dollar Swiss, you know, from this high. So A, a little B, some C. All right, so pay attention to uh, Vladimir, also RBNZ, of course, Kiwi, of course, we will take a look at that. Uh, but yeah, pay attention to what's going on with Kiwi. Um, you know, it's it's good to focus on what's really clear. And certainly I would say that that, that Kiwi is, is pretty clear right now, right? I mean, this is a real clear five-wave rally. Um, doesn't get any cleaner than that. That's exactly what you want to see. And... You know, if we can get, uh, hold on here. if we can get this three wave drop from up here to be as clean as, as this five wave rally, we have a hell of a long, long dollar Swiss opportunity. Um, okay. Which obviously, uh, I don't even know the last time I, I, I wrote about dollar Swiss in, you know, in this, uh, in, in SB. It's been so long. So that could be a really amazing, amazing opportunity. It can kind of be like a vision type of trade, a game changer um, with that, with the drop that you had, you know, back, back here, uh, this break could end up being a major false, false move to the downside. All right. And on that, you know, we've got Euro Swiss, of course. I know we've gone through that um, a little bit over the last couple of, uh, a uh, couple of webinars, but uh, Euro Swiss itself showing great, you know, great levels and responding to wonderful levels. Obviously, it's volatile, so it's clean. Um, so, yeah, it's not not often that I want to focus more on dollar Swiss than pound dollar, but I guess that is the case now. Uh, the long term updates uh, for cable. As we get. Into cable, it's. I still think you have massive upside in cable, but probably not until you get support down near 127 or so, right? Um, 
the levels on a long-term basis. Leon saying, what's your longer term price for dollars or objective? In my opinion, um, you know, that's a good question. So, and I'm going to answer, it's a good question because I think your answer, the answer will uh, kind of surprise you or it's how, it's how I like to go about things, right? So let's take a look. Let's go to Dollar Swiss. Okay. So here's the weekly, right? Here's the weekly chart, and let's see what's the S&P doing? Down to seven and a half. All right. Um, here's the weekly chart. Look, I would not be surprised to see Dollar Swiss eventually trade up here. You know, I have been around for and seen the insanity that goes on with the, with the Swiss franc uh, enough to know that you kind of have to be creative in your thought process when it comes to, to comes to the Swiss franc. I mean, that's true for anything, but especially after a period like this, where for five years, price action's been so muted, right? That's the type of atmosphere or condition that, you know, that needs to be in place in order to have um, extreme, uh, you know, extreme moves occur, right? After extreme moves happen is when you go into you know, after extreme moves, trends, what have you, that's when you go into really quiet action. And after you have extreme quiet for a really long period of time, and the longer the period of time, the better for a crazy move to happen. So ultimately, Leon and everyone else, uh, I would be, you know, my long term price objective, I guess, or target in mind would be all the way up here, you know, all the way on this upper parallel. And that, by the way, is the 1985 to 2001 trend line. OK. So it's a, it's it's a ways, it's a ways away, uh, but that's where I'd be looking. And you know, if we look at it, um, you know, on a shorter term basis, you know, and this is a weekly chart, but let's say, you know, this channel, okay, this thing channels perfectly. So this is log chart. So you got to draw a line here and take the same angle and extend it off the low from 2014. Right. Yeah, Leon saying positive carry uh, until then, um, you know, unless uh, the, you know, have a repeat of dropping the SMB peg and crash. Yeah. I mean, so that's another thing like it, you don't want to recency bias, obviously, will get in the way of this of, of this thinking. Um, it's just like, you know, think about. Like, I don't think that's going to happen again. OK. You know, I, I mean, just because I don't think it's going to happen. But, yeah, I don't think it's going to happen again. But. So here you go. OK, so put the, put that angle on there. OK, so let look at this. Look how beautiful this is. All right. This is, again, a weekly chart. All right. Do you see this 25 line? Look at all that. Look at all that. Look where we just look where we just topped. OK. Look where we just topped. And the median line is probably your next level of interest. Uh, and that would intersect basically the March 2000 high or 2000 high March high from this year, 2017. So, you know, from a trader uh, perspective, swing perspective, your next target on here is probably around 101.75. And it's going to be the median line. You know, so I would draw this in. And again, this is on log scale. OK, looks a little different. Not on log scale. It's on log scale. So 75 line up here uh, was the top in, in December of 2016. And the low here, uh, obviously, perfect touch, you know. And again, this is drawn from this high, 
right? I know you're like, what, what, how are you drawing this? Because it's off, it's off of thin air. No, it's actually drawn off of the high from, from 2013 and pre SMB, right? So as long as this is going on, um, trade it, right? So yeah, probably looking for low. What do we say? 95.65, 618 of this. That, that's, uh, and then, and then, and then looking higher. So yeah, kind of excited about Dollar Swiss. Don't kill me. Uh, dollar Swiss, Dollar Swiss. Yeah. All right. So there we go. All right. Moving on to cable. So cable. So it was long last week. Didn't lose any money on it because proper – this just goes to show you that like predicting the market is kind of all bullshit really, right? It doesn't really – you don't need to predict what's going to happen. I mean you can't have – you have to have some sort of a clue, right? But you're going to be wrong because – I mean it, it, you just you just are. Like you know, no one knows what's going to happen in the future. You just can't tell. That's why trading tactics and risk management are the most important thing in the world, all right, when it comes to trading, much more so than – your ability to analyze a market. Now you get someone combined, you know, that can analyze a market and, and find good reward to risk situations and also employ trading tactics and be disciplined about it. And that's when you have the combination for success. Okay. So what's happened? Well, again, here's the, it, I think it's pretty clear at this point that the angles from uh, the 2007, 2014 trend line are actually um, doing really good things here. And, you know, parallel right here. Okay, topped on it last week. Um, have come into some support here from the 25 line. Ultimately, though, I do think we're heading lower towards the 27 area, right? 127, uh, 127.20 to be specific. 127.20, we'll go to the charts. I have them here. 127.20 is essentially going to be close to the lower parallel, right, for much of August, and that is a square root level, yay, right, square root level, which has done some things in the past, right, notably very close to the high from actually uh, February, right, right here. Okay, so the dream scenario here for us, um, and you can see we're on this parallel now and we are holding it. We've been trading on it the last two days. So I'm thinking bounce. Um, that certainly fits with the, uh, you know, with, 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 with the DXY coming into the 20-day average, it certainly fits. So I'm thinking bounce and then thinking that we find resistance and head lower. So, you know, I know Monday's update was we thought one, two, three, four, five, and then we wanted to sell a bounce up towards the 10-day average, which at this point is just above 131. As it is now, you've got, um, I would, you know, I'd still count it as a five, one, two, you know, three, four, five. So a little different, same idea. Idea being that selling a bounce. So, you know, looking higher from here, but up towards 131, 131.15 or so. Um, if that was a low, FIB 31.10 would be the 50%. You actually would have the 618 to 31.47, which is cool because 31.43 is the, um, is the NFP level, the volume level, right? You can see that right here. Actually, sorry, it's not NFP level, it's the BOE level. It was before that. There's that level right there. So the BOE level, uh, it, you know, kind of a, a major major spot. But that it gives you a zone to look towards in cable before you get down towards uh, the drop that I think is gonna happen over the course of maybe even on the course of August. Um, and of course the seasonal tendencies here would be would be in line there, right? 
you know, you tend to come into, it looks like, well, yep, September really is when the seasonals bottom. So fits nicely. So yeah, drop, pop, more drop. You know, so from here, look for a bounce and, uh, and then lower. Okay, that's cable. Uh, Kiwi, no, sorry, Aussie, and then we'll go to Kiwi. So Aussie, we are in the zone. Uh, where I, Aussie kind of needs the bottom if, you know, if it's actually, if this breakout is going to be for real. Now, I wouldn't, you know, I'd, I'd want to give it kind of like a weekly close. Like if you, it almost would be a better setup even. Like if you dropped below 78.34 on an intraday basis or even a daily basis, but then closed above it on Friday. That to me would be, uh, you know, that'd be a, a superior setup, really, be a really good setup. Because at that point, what you'd have is you'd have a bunch of people probably calling this a major top at that point, but then they would, they themselves would get trapped, right? Um, but yeah, you can see where we are. We've come off, you know, we actually had a target at 81 and of course, it was missed 80.65 the high, but then we were smart. We weren't stupid, and we trailed the stop to 79.15. So we did bank pretty well on uh, on that trade. Ended up getting a great entry down here. Um, but you can just see how how awesome these these uh, 25, 75 lines are. So we went from the 25 line to the 75 line and topped literally right on it. It was also a square root progression. It was the 10th square root progression from the yearly opening price at 80.45, which is very close to where we topped. Um, and now we're pulling back and 78.75 was where we were looking at support, uh, did not hold or have not held that. We're currently trading 78.72. And the high from 2016 is 78.34. So that's kind of you know in line with the median line. And below there, you'd really be looking at probably 70, 70, 70, 790, all right? And, um, you know, that's, you know, potentially, I guess, where you could get if you overshot 7034, but just know that we're looking for 7034 to hold. This also begs another question, I guess, about, uh, about you know, uh, trading tactics. So, you know, I think Aussie's in a trend and I think there's potential for it to actually surprise a lot of people and head to the breakout target of near 85. OK, that's just because I think that could happen doesn't mean it's going to happen. Right. So you say, well, why don't you just put orders to go long at 7840 or something? Right. Right. I don't want to do that. Because I don't know if that level is going to hold like if this what if this was a fake out? So I want to see it come down. I want to see it base. It's not, you're not going to miss anything by missing the first 50 pips of the move, right? If we're thinking that we could come in, test this, and then rip higher, allow it to come in, allow it to stop, allow it to, you know, base or whatever, even if it means, uh, you know, a, a five-wave rally on a 15-minute chart, you know, at least that gives you some evidence that you've actually put a low in that, that's worth trading. OK, uh, we don't have that information yet. So, you know, we're not we're not uh, chomping at the bit to to put orders in. You know, if I look at the short term chart. Same thing, you can see the same median line here It's the same level right here. OK, um, this to me it is, you know, it's choppy. This is choppy. This is overlapping. So to me, this this argues for, um, you know, uh, calling this a correction, I guess, right? 
in wave-wise, I think we talked about this once, but I, I think we've got a one, two, three, four, five. So one, two, one, two, three, four, five. That's three, which means this, everything from the top is a four. And fours do tend to be a little more complicated, right? A little more complicated, a little more, uh, you know, a little more difficult, right? Uh, not as, as easy and sharp as second wave, as second waves, right? And there's a there's a reason for that. After you've had everybody join in on the big move higher, it, the market gets crowded and saturated, and it takes the price action like this to get rid of everybody, so that the market's allowed to go higher again. You know, so even if we turn up. You know, we may very well be in something like a triangle, which obviously is, you know, very common for a fourth wave. So, you know, so patience here with with Aussie, but just know that 78, 34, 35 is uh, the big spot to pay attention to uh, next. All right. OK, Kiwi dollar. So Kiwi, we've got R, B and Z later today. Here's the daily chart for Kiwi. Um, the weekly chart, which you can see in the long-term updates. So we have failed at we have failed at major, uh, you know, major level. I mean, 50% of the entire decline from from the 2014 high. Okay. And come off hard for two weeks. So, you know, my focus is on near term focus is on the median line, which would be about 72. And then you've got this parallel, very long term parallel, which was resistance, um, you know, very close to the September 2016 high. It was also, of course, resistance in February, not far from the high back in, in November either. Um, but that's where I'm looking towards these two levels so that would give you 72 and then about 7150 so those are the two big areas to pay attention to right near term i want to be selling any sort of um rally into basically 7387 to 74 so you've got all these highs and lows uh in this region going back uh, to July uh, 19th, okay, 19th, and then here's July 25th, 26th, a uh, bunch of congestion here starting in August, okay, uh, weekly open 73.99, 20-day average, right about 74 as well, and again, if we scroll back and just look at this year, you can see similar setups, right, C you know, crack below the 20-day average, rally up into it and fail okay same thing happened actually back in may albeit in a very different context because at that point you were actually uh you know towards lows but same idea same setup rally into the 20-day fail okay and then most recently you actually had 20-day hold of support that was back on uh, 718 so yes if you get r b and z um you know, you get some sort of a rally on R, B, and Z back to 73, 85, 74. I'd be a seller of that. Um, you're looking for resistance stops, you know, 74, 60, and then looking for basically 72 to 71, 50. So you get real good reward to risk at that point, you know, talking, you know, probably 60 to 75 pips of risk. Uh, looking towards uh, at that point, you would have almost 200, 250 pips of possible gain on um on the downside okay so that's it that's my plan if you will you know 7260 is a level like that i guess could be minor support i wouldn't want to touch it there you know the levels for me to trade are the, are the ones mentioned 7150 to 72 and then the 73 85 74 uh, zone for resistance okay dollar yen um dollar yen dollar yen hmm well, had what I thought was going to be a really awesome call 
for a big low uh, with some of the stuff we were looking at here last week or over the weekend, sorry. These are the updates. We had the 15 week cycle. Um, this cycle actually is pretty wild. It hit some pretty big levels. You can go back and, and look at it yourself too. We also have, of course, the uh, the major analog situation. And the seasonal situation is interesting for uh, the Japanese yen as well. So historically, seasonals are pretty weak for, for dollar yen. Um, down into really mid to you know early October, uh, except the last five years, right? You've actually last week was actually the seasonal low. Now that's been in a dollar bull market, of course. So I'm not saying that I'm not dismissing the you know seasonal negative effects, especially if uh, you know we start to start to break through this the support that we're at. And that support, of course, is that support, of course, is right here. So that could be happening today. Um, you know, see how we close here. But you know, look, this is you got you got three down, three down, three up. It's not, I don't think it's at all crazy, especially if the call on the stock market is, is in the, you know, right area um, that you head down towards here. You know, we, we still have a, the gap open, by the way, from the election. Um, it's 106.79. Actually, no, sorry, it's 106.62. And then we're sitting on this median line. So um, really caught between a rock and a hard place, you know, 1025 to 1060, I'd put as resistance kind of hate trading dollar yen, or at least I do, um, with these weird geopolitical situations. I mean, you know, dollar yen's not doing a lot for what you would think, right? It, it gold When gold's up 17 bucks, right, bonds are up, you know, 100 basis points here you know, almost 90 basis points, you'd think that dollar yen would be a little more uh, pressing the issue on support down here. Oh, the Nikkei, by the way, is down 225 points. So, you know, I think there's real risk of a break here, especially given the, the, the median line right here, right? Median line breaks. So if you get a median line break and we come we come in, you know what the setup is, it's, it's through the retest of the median line. So you get a drop, come back, that's the ZRT, right? The, the zoom and retest. If we get that, then uh, there's your setup and you'd be targeting a couple levels. One would be down at this level right here, okay? Which crosses these lows. And the next of course would be down towards probably the longer term support line. Um, you can put in as well the shorter term or, or you know near term look at the the near term thing with is resistance here the last couple of days so those are lines between 25 and 75 all right so that might get you maybe some minor support down on this line which would be about 10880 which would actually be right on the low what's that the low from uh from 614 you know, so you get a drop, maybe a pop, and then more weakness. That would be the ideal situation for for trading dollar yen on the short side. Um, yeah, I'm high going through S&P and DAX. Yeah, we'll definitely look at that. 
Okay, dollar CAD. We'll go there, and then we'll move on to uh, some some gold and in, in, in the markets you guys have asked questions about. Uh, no change here from yesterday. I'm looking for some sort of a peak, I guess. Um, you know, you, you do have a good short-term slope to look at too. So, you know, that's always that's always a positive when you have the long-term stuff too. But uh, scrolling out, you know, this is your original trend line on the decline. Extend the parallel from this low, which was resistance. Okay, back before uh, we got, you know, early July before we went, you know, uh, much lower, and that is very close. So it's, you know, call it 2750, but you got the square root level there, and of course you got the August 2016 low, right? Uh, which is always interesting because um, it's August 2017 now, so. You know, I always kind of like that when you're at the same level as you were a year before, you tend to get reactions on it. And that's where I would be looking for the next top um, in dollar CAD. But we've obviously seen the extent of the rally that we have seen. Not sure how big the top's going to be. I don't think you're just going to top and then go straight down. You're probably going to get more of like a top and then come in and find support, you know, what we say 126 to 126.20 is still the area where you'd probably find some support and you could actually just range trade this from here down to here and up uh, because you do have a clean bullish slope on the near term. Okay, especially this one, you'll be watching for support on this level right here. All right, so sell red, buy blue. It's the best, the best thing to do as far as I'm concerned. All right, S&P, gold, let's go to gold first. <clears throat> All right, so gold, um, little fake out move here yesterday it came right back you know gold to me is on its way for uh, for higher levels um, you've already got a bullish outside week here so that's a positive. You're in a very positive seasonal environment for gold. You can see when we look at this on log scale, right? Remember, arithmetic scale has already been broken. Log scale, resistance about 12, 85, 86. And then the really big test is going to be up in the 1320s. Okay. That's the really, really big test for gold, right? You get above there, then you've definitively broken. Um, you've definitively broken the uh, the downtrend from 2011. Okay, but yeah, still levels to get through. Let's look at copper because it's an important in an important place right now. Copper's coming off here. I would actually be looking for support pretty close to here. Uh, to, to about 290 and change. Okay. You can see that's on this magenta parallel. You can see the support here, 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 spiking, you know, around it, whatever. Um, looking for that to hold. It may be that. Yeah, I'm looking for supports on the way down. Okay, that's important. I want to get that across because I don't think that um, – what? Where's my – where are my lines at on this thing? Oh, well. Because I don't think there's resistance in copper up until – really up until here. That's the long-term 
you can see the long-term uh, resistance line. If you were to get down to the median line, it'd be a wonderful buy. I don't know if you're gonna get down there though. So basically look for support near 2940. Uh, and that is also in line, I guess, with looking for Aussie to find support nearby too. And then finally, TLT, right? Don't forget we're looking at resistance probably near 2630. Could be a little higher on this parallel, 2670s. But um, remember, you got the 618 and two equal legs up, and you have also a high volume level there from 614. So that's a big area. Uh, if you find resistance and turn down, then you might actually start to see dollar yen get legs. So, you know, very much to me a work in progress. Things, dollar yen and everything, uh, well, especially dollar yen right now is about as clear as mud. So I'm not, you know, I'm kind of sitting back. I'm in no hurry to take any dollar yen trade at this point. Okay, now the questions we also had for or from uh, from some of the members here. We had, let's see, Vladimir, pound, gold, net gas. Yeah, let's look at net gas. And then we had uh, the S&P and the DAX. So net gas, go there. So net gas turning up sharply. Getting a tweezer bottom on the weekly chart. If we get that, it'd be a big positive. Uh, tweezer bottom, remember you open on the low. Excuse me. Open on the low and close on the high of the week. So if we close up on the high of the week on Friday, it would be a tweezer bottom, one of the more reliable chart um, candlestick patterns in my experience. And... Yeah, looking very positive. So follow this slope here, um, Vladimir. If we're getting up into, I'd call it 292 in, in NAT gas, um, you know, would be some resistance. And then I'd look for support on a pullback. Right? So if you get some resistance up near 292, you get a pullback. Watch for support near 280, right? That's how you get lows. You get lows by making old resistance become supports, right, within the structure. And within the structure, uh, this level does cross some pretty good inflection points. It's been support before. It's been resistance before. It's been support again. And you'd look for it to be a final support so you can get your kind of your touch and go on the upside. Okay. Okay, S&P. Oh, also, I forgot to, this was, I tweeted this chart last night, but here is um, Euro Yen. If Euro Yen's in a, I guess what we call, you know, if it's in a, if it's turned over for a little bit. Remember, we had on the long-term chart, kind of the 131 to 126 area is really, you know, kind of the big range, really um, highlights very, very significant levels on a long-term basis. And in order to trade that, I'd be looking at, well, kind of resistance here, um, but maybe closer to 129.80 as well. So that would put you near the 20 day average and you've got this low here, spike low from 8.1. Uh, I guess Mike, Mike would call that uh, the opening range for the month, which it is. And you've also got the parallel that extends off of this low right here on 8.4. So um, Euro Yen could be a solid, short this is actually to me this is a cleaner short opportunity uh at least the way i look at things and trades cleaner than than dollar yen at this point which is again just kind of a complete mess from my perspective down here i feel like dollar yen is going to break but it's not going to do it easily it's going to try to rally and stop everyone out of shorts just like it stopped everyone out of longs before so this is might this might be the way to do it to play to play not just euro but but yen play both of them at the same time. Uh, this Euro Yen looks looks like a solid, solid opportunity. 
uh, to potentially, to, you know, potentially trade on the short side. So if we did that, we'd probably be looking for, you know, probably be looking for at least the median line down near 120, just above 127, right? Um, you'd be, you know, down here, right? Down that median line. It's exactly where you'd be looking towards. Okay, let's go to the S&P. So, okay, 2490 uh, is the high right now. And that's significant because The entire measured move from the financial crisis, I guess, uh, is actually 2485. All right, so 1576 down to 667. Okay, take the difference there, add it to the top, and you get 2485. All right, the 618 extension of that was actually the high, nailed the high in 2015. So to me, this tells you that you could fall apart from here, at least top for a bit. Now, I do think that based on the wave count from the 2016 low, you got one, two, one, two, three, four, five, three. So this coming drop is probably just a fourth. But just a fourth probably gets you down, you know, we're talking down to the 23, close to 2350, maybe. Uh, so that's, you know, it's a big drop. You're talking something that we haven't really seen in a long time and people are going to be freaking out because the market never drops ever anymore. Uh, and it'll feel like the market's crashing. So if that happens, you probably get dollar yen lower. I say probably because um, it can obviously do its own thing, right? We've seen dollar yen trade lower and the S&P has gone higher. So it's not like um, dollar yen has to go with the S&P, but it would seem unlike, awfully unlikely that, uh, you know, if you get a, 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 a booming VIX, and the S&P comes off like this, it would seem awfully unlikely that dollar yen is going to completely ignore it, right? So that's my thought process. I do think that yesterday could have been the top. I mean, trying to call the top today uh, is more or less impossible, but I haven't seen anything yet, you know, that would suggest we're at the top until yesterday, basically. So there, so there's that. All right. Um, and then you said the DAX, right? So let's look at the DAX. Mahai wanted to know about the DAX. So I think the level we talked about before was 12.031, uh, two legs down, I guess, is where we'll be looking at it. I don't have, you know, near obviously nearly as much analysis here. I feel like a lot of what's going on here. A lot of my. Huh. Oh, all right. There we go. Okay, so 12.031 is level to watch, but so too would be 11, uh, you know, 11.640. I mean, 
can't have every single uh, chart, I guess, laid out perfectly. But if you look at this, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, like the DAX actually looks like it could be more constructive to me than the S&P. So where would a 38.2 come in from here? Eleven eight three six on this low. That probably is the level to watch. Eleven three eight eleven eight three six, excuse me. So watch eleven eight three six because that's the thirty eight two of this. And if you get one, two, one, two, three, this is a four, then you can go higher again, right? Now, why don't we take a look at the S&P divided by the DAX. So this is on a weekly basis, okay. Is there anything interesting there? I don't know. Not really. It's quite the range. Um, S&P divided by the deck. So yeah, quite a range. Nothing of note, I would say. Uh, to look at, so nothing clear. If there was, it'd be great. We could maybe get a better idea of, of what's going on uh, with the two diverging as they have. But yeah, I don't see anything significant here to look at. I mean, you know, this false break to the bottom is interesting um, with the S&P against the DAX. And then we went to the top of the range. That was right there, Brexit, came back. That's in May. So nothing to really glean from that as far as I'm concerned. Any other questions? Um, pay attention to Euro Swiss, right? It's going to be like this, I think, for probably the rest of August, okay? Uh, meaning it's going to be quiet sideways at times loud but for the most part quiet sideways you know watch 1230 or so in euro swiss you know the dollar pairs are good i mean the levels are decent you know pound support probably going up to 31 10 50 and then lower cable or sorry euro support Five down, just like DXY five up, probably going back to 1825.40, then lower. Dollar yen, not really sure. Uh, I don't really feel like guessing at this point what the deal is going on, what's going on with dollar yen. Uh, Kiwi, want to short it if it rallies up to 73.85.74 and then lower. Aussie, actually looking for a low at 78. 34 at this point, if it snaps below there, then I'd say 77.90 is your last line in the sand for any sort of hope for a dollar bull. Otherwise, that whole thing is a complete fake out. Um, and yeah, dollar CAD range trading between 27.50 and 26.26.20. All right. So there you go. That is my bias on the big majors the dollar majors and whatnot at this at this point uh euro yen does look like the best setup though um to sell up into you know selling up into 29.83 or so right not very far away uh 29.30 right now we were 100 points lower couple hours ago. So don't be surprised to see that hit maybe even today. 
Uh, and with that, I shall end the webinar. Uh, thank you, as always, for your time. Very, very much appreciated. And um, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Uh, have a nice day, Mahai. Absolutely. Have a wonderful rest of your week and good luck out there. Uh, and uh, stay nimble. You're in. We're going to be in these August ranges probably for the rest of the month. Okay, so don't um, you know? Don't get married to any short-term trades. Put it that way. Keep them. Keep them just that short-term. All right, guys uh, and gals. I will talk to you later. All right, bye.